Good morning and happy Sabbath. Do you know uh, the flower name Magnolia, right? So what uh, what are the colors of this Magnolia, the flower? <laughs> it might be uh, white, we saw when we were young, and there are a lot of, uh, there are two or three different colors. Uh, when we were young, uh, the Magnolia flower was white, and now it has become more like beige <laughs> because, because of the pollutions. And uh, I have been giving seminar about the book of Job. And then as I prepare those seminars, I kept thinking about forgiveness of Jesus. And uh, Jesus told us that if you do not actually forgive your brothers, that you will not be forgiven. So let us uh, get the facts straight here. So what is first? What is the first thing? God's forgiveness? Or for us, forgiving other people? In Matthew chapter 6, verse 15, it says, But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So which one comes first? To get forgiveness from uh, Jesus, that is first? Or forgive other people who did bad to us first? Which one is first? Do you understand now? So this is a very uh, serious question now. What is first? What is the first to come? God forgiving us or us forgiving other people? And now, Apostle Peter asked Jesus, and uh, Jesus, how many times do we forgive others? And Jesus actually answer this question of Peter a little strangely. And Matthew chapter 18, verse 23 says, Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. Now, settle accounts means, uh, of course, you know, right? Paying a debt and asking people who actually uh, owed money uh, to repay, right? So the man who owed 10,000 talents were summoned, was summoned before the king. And this 10,000 talents is the amount of money nowadays that we can actually pay more than 100 servants for over a decade. There's a lot of money. The man who was, but this man who owed 10,000 talents from the king was actually forgiven by the compassion of the king. And the man who was forgiven his death, the 10,000 talents, didn't forgive his fellow servant who owed him 100 pence. And he was actually captured by the king again. He was imprisoned later. And now this man who was forgiven much didn't forgive his fellow who owed him little. And who saw this whole thing happened, told the king. When the king heard this, the king said like this. And Matthew chapter 18, verse 32 through 33, it says, Then his master, the king, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And now the king is telling this man, I actually forgave you and forgive all your debt. But why didn't you do the same to your fellow servant? And why did Jesus give this example to Peter? What about us? Have we been forgiven by Jesus, right? We did. We have. And why can't we love our husband? Why can't we love our children and wife? Why? Jesus wanted to give Peter this lesson. If we are not, we cannot experience the forgiveness. We cannot give forgiveness to others too. He who is unmerciful toward others shows that he himself is not a partaker of God's pardoning 
grace. So what, what should we first? What should we do first? Should we try our best to forgive others? No, it's not. First thing we have to do is, this is very important, we have to experience Jesus' pardoning love again and again and again. We have to go back to the cross of Jesus first. So if we have a mind not to forgive other people, that it, which means that what? We are not forgiven. We don't experience Jesus' forgiveness. That's what that means. Mary Magdalene was forgiven by Jesus. Was, she was healed too. She was once possessed by seven different demons, right? What about Simon, the uncle of uh, Mary Magdalene? Simon was healed. He was a leper. But he was healed by Jesus Christ again. But the reply of both of them were totally different to Jesus. Simon didn't do anything. But Mary Magdalene, she sold all her belongings and she bought the glass of perfume for Jesus. But Simon, even though she, he was forgiven, and he was healed from being leper, but he just gave only a little thing to Jesus, give him dinner. And the last part of this whole parable goes like this. Matthew chapter 18, verse 35, it says, So my heavenly Father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. So just forgiveness. So Superficial forgiveness and the deep forgiveness is totally different. God can actually recognize that from us. If we are deeply forgiven, if we feel that we are deeply forgiven by the love of Jesus Christ's cross and His blood, then we will have for sure, that's the time we have love for other people and a mind to forgive other people too. Sometimes I... I actually give uh, this example. There is a certain difference between the middle mouse and the wild mouse, especially in their amount of uh, uh, amount of their oxytocin. And this middle mouse is actually has practices monogamy. A wild mouse doesn't. 초원들쥐와 산들쥐를 대상으로 한 연구가 있다. 초원들쥐는 평생 한 마리의 파트너와 짝이 되어 살아가는 반면 산들쥐 수컷은 살면서 여러 마리의 암컷과 교미를 하고 어미든 새끼든 돌보지 않는다. 이두 종의 쥐는 유전적으로 99% 같지만 산들쥐와 초원들쥐는 옥시토신과 바소프레신에서 차이를 보인다. 초원들쥐는 두 호르몬이 정상적으로 작용하는 반면 남봉꾼인 산들쥐에게는 이두 호르몬을 받아들이는 수용체가 없어 호르몬이 분비되어도 작용하지 않는 것이다. There's a difference between the middle mouse and the, the wild mouse, right? And the difference is the amount of their oxytocin and also vasopressin. And this video gave us the reasons for uh, reasons for this wild mouse being polygamy, practicing polygamy as many different wives because they don't have the receptors that could process these two hormones, oxytocin and vasopressin. That's why this white mouse goes to other female to get love, be loved, because it doesn't have any receptors to actually get oxytocin and vasopressin. That's why it actually seeks other wives, other female every time. Nothing can justify unforgiving spirit. He who is unmerciful toward others shows that he himself is not a partaker of God's pardoning grace. So when we reach, when we are, when we fall into this situation where we cannot forgive others, which means that we are no worthy to be forgiven, as well as we cannot actually forgive others because we don't have any experience of true forgiveness from Jesus. So if we cannot forgive other people, what we should do at the first place is to go to Jesus again and try to understand His love and be forgiven again. So once we are forgiven deeply, then naturally forgiveness towards others will come to us. 
We feel that we will forgive other people. We want to forgive other people. In God's forgiveness, the heart of the earning one is drawn close to the great heart of infinite love. The tide of divine compassion flows into the sinner's soul and from him to the souls of others. Amen. So when we experience, when we practice, and when we experience this love and grace of Jesus Christ's blood from the cross, then that's the time. The forgiveness from Jesus passed through us and goes to other people. Do you know Lord's Prayer, right? The prayer that Jesus actually taught us to do. You, you memorize those, right? And the Lord's Prayer says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So what comes first? In the Matthew chapter 6, verse 12, it says, And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. This is for sure. So, don't you have any questions right now? Reading this Bible verse? As we forgive other people, that is as it is our habit to forgive. When we have a receptor, to receive this oxytocin. Then, the person who receives this oxytocin will love his wife or her husband, right? So when we have a habit to practice this receptor, so which means that when once we go to Jesus, once Going to Jesus becomes our habit every time. Then, forgiving other people will be our habit too. So, the meaning of not forgiving other people means that we don't go to Jesus often. But what if we try ourselves? We just say we forgive other people by our own will and our, our own strength. If we will not be accepted by Jesus. And as we forgive, that is, as it is our habit to forgive. This is habitual action. So this is kind of habit for us. This should be the habit for us. So when we go to Jesus and be accepted by Him and His grace and love and be forgiven by the blood of Jesus on the cross, and then that's the time the power of forgiveness will go through us to other people. So that's the time we can forgive other people. But once we do not go to Jesus' cross, then the forgiveness we are giving to other people will not come from Jesus, but only for our own will and our own power. And it will not be acceptable to Jesus for sure. We have to make it as a habit to go to Jesus every time. There was one soldier in a Second World War. His name is Sowi Onoda. He is a figure who refused to surrender and continued to fight on a Lubang Island in the Philippines and until the very end of the war. He did not know the Second World War was over. And so this Onoda was found. Someone who found this uh, Japanese soldier actually tried to persuade him to go down. But however, Onoda and some of his subordinates believed this to be the deception tactic by the United States and refused to surrender, continuing their own war. So, this Captain Onoda, he didn't believe it, believed the truth, and try to actually refuse to surrender. And in 1974, the Japanese explorer Noria Suzuki heard the news that a former Japanese soldier from the defeated army was still fighting a lonely battle in the Southern Army and became interested in the story. After some inquiries, Suzuki was able to meet with Onoda. 
And then this one of the Onoda's superiors, and then uh, they found this man, the superior, and then uh, they just made an arrangement but to uh, meet this Onoda. The Japanese government located on Onoda's former superior, Major Yoshimi Taniguchi, and who was working in a bookstore on March 9th of that year. That year, uh, Taniguchi met with Onoda and issued the order for him to just stand, stand down and mission release and return home. And finally, he believed. His direct officer actually told them, told him to back down and stand down and return home. And that's the time he finally believed. In order to quickly bring Onoda back to Japan, the government located one of Onoda's former superiors from the war and tasked him with delivering the official order for Onoda to surrender. After nearly two decades of searching, the government finally located the former superior and he was able to deliver the order to Onoda. With this, Onoda's 29-year-long struggle finally came to, came to an end. So this is the picture of Onoda arriving in Japan, waving his hands. But it was a very sad story too. The greater the sinner's guilt, the more lie needs the Savior. His heart of divine love and sympathy is drawn out most of all for the one who is the most hopelessly entangled in the snares of the enemy. With his own blood, he has signed the emancipation papers of the race. Amen. For 29 years, he didn't have any hope. How pity it is. Maybe we are, maybe God and Jesus feels the same way to us. They feel pity on us right now. I mean, Jesus feels pity on us because God actually, Jesus forgave us about 20,000 years ago on the cross. But we still try to hang on the scene that we have been doing. For most of, I mean, all of us, who have been hiding in the woods for 29 years, just like Onoda, we have to come out from the woods and try to get the facts straight that Jesus actually saved us and forgave us for all. So we have to forgive others too. We have to practice this now. God's unwillingness to forgive one who harbors an unforgiving spirit is based on the need of the unforgiving person to overcome a basic character defect. God always forgives us. But when we don't realize the seriousness of and this, this horrible truth of our uh, sinful nature, if we don't understand that, but we don't go to Jesus' cross. Then, Almighty God, He even cannot. He cannot even forgive us. So we have to see Jesus. We have to go to the cross of Jesus every time. Question, right? Time, Lord, how many times should we forgive other people? In Matthew chapter 18, verse 21, it says, Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him up to seven times? And how many times? And did you just say how many times? Peter said, for Peter, it was seven times. Maybe for us, maybe once or twice, maybe. If our husband and our wives did something bad on us and do, did something, uh, some mistake, then uh, should we forgive them once or twice? And Jesus told Peter seven times 70, which means 490 times. And done after, for, after forgiving someone who did bad to us 490 times, and then what? 
Matthew 18, 22. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. So 400, 490 times, that's what Jesus is telling now. So like we heard before, the habit of forgiveness, forgiving with our deep heart. How many times it's not important? True forgiveness is not limited by numbers. Furthermore, it is not the act that counts, but the spirit that prompts the act. Nothing can justify an unforgiving spirit. Nothing can justify an unforgiving spirit. No matter what kind of circumstances you are in, no matter what kind of uh, bad things you have been experiencing. No. Forgiving is nothing can justify an unforgiving spirit. There's no limitation. Just like compass exactly directing north every time, right? Just like compass, we have to forgive other people. We have to become a very person that cannot live without forgiveness. We are not forgiven because we forgive. But as we, as we forgive, the ground of all forgiveness is found in the unmerited love of God. But by our attitude toward others, we show whether we have made that love our own. So, it is very important that we actually show Jesus' love to other people by forgiving others. Without willingness, it's not forgiveness doesn't mean anything. In England, there's education about avoiding your eyesight. There is a capacity to uh, memory, the memory capacity in our brain. And now, as you can see in the picture, this capacity to memorize some happenings are mostly uh, very similar to one another. There can be crayons, and there can be um, face of the teacher in your memory. But for those kids in England, they were actually participated in this experiment. In their memory, the face of teacher, their teacher was the biggest. It took the biggest uh, part of their memory, the capacity of their memory. And uh, when they get rid of the teacher from their memory, then much more things uh, they can actually uh, remember. But... But the problem is that without the memory of their, uh, the face of their teacher, they can actually contain more memory uh, inside their head. But the problem is that without the face of the teacher, all these other things in their, mem in their memory will just entangle each other and will be not coordinated. So the percentage of getting a correct, correct answers from the, any test, 64 among the children who train or with the training got the correct answers from the test. But 34.4% among children without the training got the correct answers. So do you want to be trained or do you want to, you don't want any training? So when the problem comes to us, when we face any obstacles before us, which means that there's something, some happenings, some situations that comes to us that we cannot actually forgive other people. For example, when you see your husband's face, that you remember many things that your husband did bad to you, right? So that's the time we actually avoid our eyesight. So no matter how much we try our best to look at Jesus, when this emotional flood comes into us, 
then we lose our control. But that time, we have to fix our eyes upon Jesus and go to the cross of Jesus. We can never come into possession of this spirit by trying to love others. What is needed is the love of Christ in the heart. When self is merged in Christ, love springs forth spontaneously. So when we fix our eyes onto the cross of Jesus, then the love will spring up from our mind. So when we look at the problem of our husband or wives, when we just look back onto the memories that we have had with them, the bad memories, then what happens? Satan will put the bad emotions into us. As for me, my own experience, <laughs> then after maybe two years, after I forgave, after I was forgiven by Jesus, and I try to forgive my wife, I finally saw my wife trying to reach the things on the high shelves, try to reach it with jumping and other things that she tries. Before then, I didn't recognize her trying. The soul that is imbued with the love of Jesus loves to contemplate Jesus and by beholding him will become changed into his likeness. Christ is formed within the hope of glory. His confidence increases. Soul that is imbued with the love of Jesus. That's why the soul who experiences Jesus' love will love other people. We see other people, we see his or her enemy with a different view. So, this is very important for us to emerge, be emerged into the love of Jesus. This is very important. We have to be very honest. Our faith should be honest. So, we can recognize ourselves, our mind, that we cannot forgive other people, right? Don't pretend to forgive other people by your own will and your own strength. No. For the Korean people, we uh, this is the picture of the late former president, Daejun Kim, sentenced to death and uh, imprisoned uh, with almost no reason by ruling party in his time, the opposite party. And nowadays, uh, uh, the head of the ruling party in uh, in that time, he his grandson actually uh, confessed his household sins and bad doings. But by the way, this former president, uh, Daejun Kim, he wrote a letter from the prison. And uh, the letter was actually released. 김대중 전 대통령이 29년 전 군사 법정에서 사형 선고를 받고 감옥에서 쓴 옥중 서신도 공개됐습니다. 죽음을 눈앞에 둔 극한 상황에서도 가족에게 전한 메시지는 용서와 사랑이었습니다. 보도에 김기현 기자입니다. 청주 교도소 수인 번호 9번 사형수 김대중은 첫 옥중 서신에서 죽음 앞에 한계 상황을 토로합니다. 희망과 좌절, 기쁨과 공포 그리고 해결과 의혹의 갈등과 번민을 매일같이 되풀이해왔고 지금도 이를 벗어나지 못하고 있습니다. 2년 8개월 감옥 생활 동안 매달 한 번만 허락됐던 글쓰기. 귀퉁이까지 빼곡하게 적어 아들에게 보낸 사연은 성찰과 반성으로 이어집니다. 아버지는 나 자신이 일생 동안 저지른 죄와 잘못 그리고 품었던 나의 사악한 마음을 남은 몰라도 스스로는 알고 있다. 아내는 미래를 위해 결코 희망의 끈을 놓지 말기를 간곡히 기원했습니다. 새 날을 향한 꿈을 꼭 간직하세요. 어떤 어려움에서도 꿈을 저버리지 마세요. 최악의 경우에도 꿈을 간직하시고 내일이 있다는 것을 잊어서는 안 됩니다. 정권을 장악한 신군부가 그에게 덧씌운 제목은 내란 음모. 하지만 사형수 김대중이 내린 결론은 용서였습니다.
용서와 사랑은 진실로 너그러운 강자만이 할수 있다. 꾸준히 노력하며 하느님께 원수를 용서하고 사랑하는 힘까지 가질 수 있도록 도와주시기를 언제나 기구하자. Who forgives? Who loves a strong person? Who actually have won the fight between the good and evil? That person loves and forgives and turns his sight from the bad things to Jesus. His life turned around. He, he dramatically stood up again and became the 15th president of South Korea. And later, he was even awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. And he even tried to embrace North Korean leader. And 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8, he says, And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Jesus forgave us, and He is forgiving us. If we cannot forgive other people, the first thing we have to do is go to Jesus and look at Jesus and turn our sides to Jesus, that Jesus will help us today. Thank you. Our thankful Father in heaven, you paid all our debts, and you were hanged on the cross because of our trespasses and our sins, our wrongdoings. Lord, we thank you so much for your grace and love and your forgiveness. And maybe because we have given too much from you so that we have not understood what you have done for us because it is too big. So maybe that's why I've not thanked you much and looked to you much. But Lord, we thank you so much once more that you let us know and let us forgive other people and forgive and try to make us love other people too. Lord, your forgiveness can cover all the sins. And please, let us be humble. Please help us to be humble in the eyes of our, even our enemies. But if, if we are not that stage yet, then please help us get nearer to your cross, Lord. So that the fight, so that let us know the fight is over. So that we can forgive other people by experiencing your true forgiveness. Lord, you have told us that you will lead us to heaven. So please, let all of us be in the path to heaven. Lord, this is the day, the seventh day, the Sabbath. So please, let us be renewed and regenerated in your love today, Lord. Lord, we will hold a seminar for the East Conference of Korea, the pastors, for, for the pastors and their wives. Please be with each and every one of them in the whole seminar. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.